Orlando, Florida. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering Pentaho World 2015. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Welcome back to Orlando, everybody. This is the Cube, and we're here live at Pentaho World 2015. This is the second. Pentaho World, about 550 customers here. Matt Cardillo is here, he's with FINRA. FINRA is a really interesting regulatory agency. Matt, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, David. Thanks for having so me. So you guys, you guys analyze 75 billion events daily, which is just a mind-boggling number, but let's start with sort of FINRA, what's it all about and what's Th your those role? Those are exceptional days. Yeah. The, 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 one of the key things about FINRA is our data, it fluctuates. Uh, dramatically. Sure, so, based on volume, obviously. Right, so, so that, that, the number you just quoted would be a, a high mark, uh, which could be about three times the average. Okay, but so still, many, many tens of billions yes. per day, even on, a, on an average day. All right, yes. so talk about FINRA, what your role is. You were telling us off camera sort of how it came about. You've been there for quite a while, around eight years now, which kind of coincided with the whole Hadoop movement. So, we want to unpack some of that, but what's your role and tell us about FINRA. Sure, uh, I'm a software engineer by trade um, and I've, I've been doing software for most of my career. Um, I came to FINRA in 2007 and <clears throat> I've worked uh, on a number of systems. I, I deliver software uh, to help analysts um, examiners, regulatory analysts to, to do their jobs. Uh, and in terms of <clears throat> uh, analyzing you know, firm data um, and, and help provide that, that qualitative analysis uh, on top of our surveillance program. So, um, so FINRA is a regulator. Uh, the, it's the Financial Regulatory Authority. And uh, our mission is to uh, ensure that the, the markets are fair. So we do that uh, in, in market regulation. It's, it is a big data problem, it always has been. And um, the market, you know, the markets are changing and, and we're changing, we need to respond and change with it. So you're making sure people are you know, playing by the rules, not mm -hmm. gaming the system, not cheating, not you know, <clears throat> doing things that you don't want them to do. Um, so yeah, that's a data problem, but to solve that problem, back in the early 2000s, you had to sort of shove all the data into a big box and maybe buy you know, Unix server and buy some Oracle licenses and then if you had any money left over, you could maybe pay some people to analyze it. Yep. Um, is that how you did it before and, and, and how did sort of Hadoop and big data change that? So, yeah, so where, where we've really shifted is, um, we, we, you know, FINRA has its own data center and we're moving, you know, we're moving toward the cloud. We want to have, um, we want to have the elasticity. Uh, we were at capacity, and, and so we needed to you know, ch change our approach so that, so that we could have that elasticity in terms of you know, responding to changes in volume data, in, in the market data, and also changes with uh, user behavior. Um, you know, with analytics, it's, it's very much a, a a, what I call a, a burst utilization problem, where on a given day, um, the, we can have spikes in, in usage. You know, when, when the markets are getting volatile, uh, we see a lot more users in the system, so we get that fluctuation. You mentioned there's, there's sort of the oversight on, uh, or surveillance, which I assume is the, kind of the insider trading Ivan Boski role, which is when a stock spikes before a deal's announced, you got to find out why there was a second role or mission in there. What, what was that? Um, so, we, well, uh, we look at, you know, make, ensuring that the markets are fair by looking at, we, we analyze market data, but we have, we do that with our surveillance program where we've got essentially algorithms that are combing through the data and, and looking for things that, that seem, you know, that are out of range of, of what we would consider normal and we have exceptions and alerts that kick out. It's the analytics on top of that where users will go in and then, you know, either to, to help uh, confirm that, that there is a problem and, and we have to go deeper or it is a uh, false positive, things so like that. So there's two things there. Well, 
one, are you, or a couple things. Are you dealing with streaming data, you know, as close to real time as possible, or can this be done overnight because you're not going to catch the guy in real time and send out, you know, the minority report guys to snatch the perpetrator before he's actually done the trade? You know, so is it unearthing like fraud and then after the fact uh, sort of investigating it? And so what type of analytics unearths it and then what allows the investigator to go look at it? Yeah, so primarily it is a look back. Um, however, things are moving more toward, you know, a, a near real time or real time scenario. Um, uh, but not, not in terms of FINRA's mission. I mean, we, 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 wanna <clears throat> we do want to be able to respond as quickly as we can. Um, a lot of our surveillance programs, they, 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 do, they look back at prior month, prior quarter, those kinds of things. Um, it is, you know, looking at what happened and then unearthing, you know, why something took place. Yeah, because you guys have to be careful about false positives, as you said. Absolutely. Um, and, and it is a look back, but uh, we heard from you know, your boss this morning in the keynote, you were dramatically compressing the time it takes to look back. I mean, it used to be, I don't know, I think I heard you know, 90 days or something, you know, a fairly long time, down to you know, 90 seconds or minutes or, or days well, or, you know, I'm sure there's a big range so, there. But. So we have, a, a, over, we have hundreds of surveillance programs running. <laughs> Some of them are designed to look at a quarter's worth of data. Right. Or, you know, or maybe just you know, a month's worth of data. There, there's, you know, there's many different rules that, that we have to enforce uh, and, and monitor for. So uh, it, it, it's definitely a combination, but, but in terms of how we're bringing the data in and making that available, that's really where we're, we're, we're compressing things, to, to bring the data to our end users sooner so that they, they can see it, you know, um, in, in some cases, next day. So let's talk about that a little bit. So the, I've said many times, the decision support, data warehouse, BI world, historically has been insights for a few. Very you know, high value people analyzing stuff, then maybe eventually it'll get acted upon. That's changing. Um, and let's talk about how you do that. If I understand it, you've got data sources coming in, mm -hmm. and then you use Pentaho to blend that data, and then you use Amazon, S3, EMR, uh, Redshift, all these you know, services, right, right. to act upon that data, and then you put it in the hands of your users. Um, That's right. And, and so it's, it's citizen analytics, I call it. So, first of all, is that the right workflow? Did I describe that right? And I'm sure you can add a lot of color to that if you would. Sure. Um, so, yeah, one of the, the, so a lot of what we're doing now is we, we need that elasticity. So, so we're doing that by embracing cloud computing, uh, Amazon in particular, uh, using their S3 file store. Uh, we're using transient clusters that we can, you know, we can actually provision uh, on the fly and, and bring up clusters to do our, our ETL on the data in terms of processing the data. We, we can bring on uh, query clusters for our users so that we can respond to demands for running analytics against the data in S3. Um, Pentaho fits into the picture uh, in terms of, the, you know, they had the ability to, to scale with our usage scenario and, and our data footprint. Um, we're able to actually pull back, you know, we're, we're able to put um, tremendous amounts of data in front of a user and then, and then let them actually pivot and, and summarize on that data to, to illuminate what, you know, to illuminate what, what's going on very quickly so that, it, you know, it leads to those next questions of, because a lot of times, you know, when, when someone's looking for a, a problem, depending on, you know, what's come about, it, you don't always know exactly what you're looking for. And, and giving, giving that power to the users to be able to go in, you know, ask questions of the data so that it can further direct or hone where they want to look uh, is, you know, very, very enlightening. It's very enabling. And is it correct that the, 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 the systems that you're using to analyze that data comprise both sort of these modern tools like, like Pentaho and, and Amazon, as well as traditional data warehouse technology. Is that correct or no? Have you sort of transitioned out of that? I mean, if you could yeah, talk we're, about I mean, where we want to go is uh, we want to be able to, 
you know, we want to be as, as elastic as possible. And, and we want to be able to have limitless scale and, and do that on commodity hardware as much as we can. Okay, so a bunch of heterogeneous stovepipes of data doesn't scale for you, is what I'm hearing. And so you want to drive as much of that into a, a cloud-like service orientation as possible. That's right. And, and on a scale of you know, zero to 100%, how far are you in that journey? Are you more than halfway, or are you? Uh, yeah, we're definitely more than halfway really? there. Really? Yep. And, okay, the other thing I wanted to ask you about is complexity. So as a software engineer, you, you're like knee deep in complexity. And we've seen a lot of the practitioners in the Wikibon community talk about the challenges of working with big data technologies, generally Hadoop specifically. Every day there's some new project coming out and some new open source capability and, and with a fun, funny name. Um, how have you dealt with that complexity? You just throw bodies at it, you got to find good people. Um, you know, the technology is one thing and then you got the people in the process is the other really hard thing. It so. is, it's challenging uh, and it really comes down to the people. People who are innovative and can embrace new technology and you know, one of the things that, that you know, going into, um, going into this <clears throat> migration uh, to the cloud, we, we knew that some of the tools and technologies that we're leveraging today may not be the tools that, that we'll be using you know, when, on the other side of this. Mm. So, so one thing that we're, we're very big on is open source. Uh, it is a huge enabler for us in terms of you know, being able to realize the elasticity I keep talking about. Um, you know, things like, like Hadoop and Hive, uh, Spark. So, <clears throat> um, there's, there's definitely followings in, in these technologies. So, there's, you know, when you, when you talk to somebody in technology, they'll, you know, they tend to gravitate toward, you know, a specific thing like Spark or, you know, Hive, you know, querying. Um, and these kinds of things, so so they they tend to go really deep in it, and those are the, the those are the people we're trying to attract. But at the same time, you, if I infer correctly, have to assume that some of those tools are disposable. Maybe you assume all of the tools are disposable. You have to create a platform that can be agile and that you can respond to. If you know, if if MapReduce is going to be replaced by Spark, is going to get replaced by something else, you have to uh, accommodate that. Or yeah, we definitely want to have a. a nimble architecture. Uh, we want to be able to adapt so that when, you know, as these things leap, they, they tend to leapfrog each other. So, you know, what, what works really well one day it becomes obsolete tomorrow because some other technology has leapfrogged it and, and can, can produce an order of magnitude more performance, for example. And, and we need to be able to respond to that. And so we, the way we architect our solutions, uh, we want it to be, you know, very pluggable. How did you guys get so smart? Is it just brute force hiring really good people? Do you sort of have relationships with the hyperscale guys like Google and, and, and Amazon where you share information? Um, I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Um, so I, I would say that, that you know, we, we're constantly learning. <laughs> um, it just, it never stops. Um, we're, you know, and, and I wouldn't say, uh, you know, when, when, <clears throat> when we're trying to attract talent, we, we're, we're looking for people who, who are, um, you know, ambitious, who are unafraid to try things and, and really get into, you know, get into the problem space. Um, so, you know, we also, we're also looking at uh, universities and, you know, we, we want, we want people who, who can really um, change, change the playing field in terms of bringing technology to life for our users. And what's your background? I mean, just you know, from a technical standpoint, where'd you come up through the ranks? Uh, so I, I'm, I'm actually an electrical and computer engineer uh, by trade, and uh, so I graduated uh, at, at a time where uh, there weren't a lot of jobs, but there were a lot of software jobs. So I, I gave that a try and never really looked back. So, so what about the kind of roadmap for you know, FINRA generally, but specifically around how organizations can and should be and will, in your view, 
uh, and maybe this is your opinion, not necessarily FINRA's, but we'll be operationalizing analytics. We, you know, Jeff Hammerbacher from Facebook and Cloudera, very famous of saying, the best minds of my generation are applying their skills to get people to click on ads. And that's changed. You know, you're seeing big data in healthcare, you guys obviously in things like fraud, and, and, and analytics is, is changing the world. What's the roadmap, you know, the vision, for how analytics is, will become operationalized and affect change? Um, well, I, <clears throat> I think as, you know, as we make this move to the cloud, um, you know, and, and complete that, I think we will be, um, we'll be a lot more agile in terms of responding to changes in the market. We'll be able to um, adapt to the technology as it, you know, continues to innovate and, um, you know, it, right now it, we're in the explosion phase of, of big data, it seems, and, and so, um, in terms of uh, analytics and, and what, what I see the future look like is, you know, we, so we have um, our surveillance programs that, that kick out these alerts and exceptions and things, and, and we want to, you know, we want to make it as seamless as possible. So from, from initial detection to be able to, you know, perform the, the analytics on top of those alerts and, and exceptions and kind of pull the thread we want, to, we want that to be as seamless as possible for our users. We want to enable them so that um, gone will be the days where it's you know, a bunch of intermediary technologists that they have to call, reach out to, to do a bunch of stuff, come back to them. Um, you know, we, want to, we want to enable them as much as we possibly can so, so that they can answer their own questions. Um, how soon we'll get there? Well, but so you're describing a, we know there's going to be more data, but you're describing a scenario where that escalation, the, the, the volume and variety of data doesn't negatively impact your elapsed time to insights and action. You actually, you're saying you're going to accelerate that despite the volumes of data increase. And that's kind of the vision that you're, you're putting forth. Yep. What about security? So a lot of people in financial services, you know, security is kind of a, a bad, a, a cloud is a bad word for in, the, in the security context. You guys have embraced the cloud generally, AWS, you know, specifically. Um, for, as a practitioner, I mean, what's your take on security in, in the cloud? Um, so I, 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 we believe that the cloud computing technologies are secure um, and, and we believe, you know, what what we're what we're implementing. Um, you know, we have <clears throat> security is implemented in, in a number of ways, um, so that so that the data is protected, um, and you know, it's not. We don't see any. We don't really see any challenges around. Um, you know, the the virtual private cloud being yeah insecure. I mean, yeah. I've always said on balance from the vast majority of organizations, what Amazon and Google are going to deliver is more secure than what you can. Now it's maybe different in financial services. There's some, some hardcore people that you know, understand these problems, but it's interesting, your, your perspective's there. All right, Matt, uh, we're out of time, but I'll give you the last word. Um, Pentaho World, you know, what do you make of this, this event? You know, why are you here, what are you learning? Um, Summarize it. So this is great, this is my first time at Pentaho World, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's pretty interesting seeing you know how much of a following there is in, in analytics and some of the innovations that are going on. It's it's pretty encouraging to see, you know, uh, all the solutions and, and some of the great minds here today. Um, I'll actually be presenting in a breakout uh, a little later on today, where we're going to uh, demonstrate some of our capability, um, you know, in, a, in one of our test environments. I'm going to show a little use case and um, kind of show how, how we can, uh, at scale, you know, look at you know, how, to, how to navigate some of the analytic problems that, that you know, challenges that we're dealing with at FINRA. Matt Cardillo from FINRA, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. Really interesting use case, somebody actually putting all these insights into action. 
This is theCUBE, we're here at live at Pentaho World 2015 in Orlando. We'll be right back. <laughs>